Hey everyone, this is Mike Kramer of Mock Capital with a weekly check-in. It's Tuesday, May 23rd, around 8 p.m. New York time. Uh, so tomorrow we're going to be getting the Fed minutes. Those should come around 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, this obviously will be for the Fed, the May meeting. Um, this meeting, obviously, uh, the Fed uh, agreed to raise rates by 25 basis points. There was also a change in the language of the statement. So I think what's important coming into these Fed minutes are what, is, what was the language uh, used in terms of how did they agree upon the change in the statement, number one. And number two, you know, how many participants were kind of hesitant and how many participants were really strongly in favor of raising rates by 25 basis points? Now, since the the FOMC meeting, there have been a number of uh, Fed officials to come out to say that, you know, they're not done raising rates, that uh, there may be further rate hikes to come, uh, that it's going to be, and Powell himself even talked about how the it's going to very much be data dependent and how that the Fed may not be done raising rates yet. Um, additionally, uh, we've seen that uh, Powell also kind of pushed back against market pricing of uh, Fed rate cuts. He basically kind of said he's not going to twist anyone's arm, but our belief is that the SEP is going to be the path based on our projections of where inflation will be. Um, and, you know, really since that meeting, uh, you've seen the Fed fund futures for December you know, creep higher, and they're at their highest levels now going back to March 10th, was just around the time of SVB. This was obviously the big decline when everyone started taking out, you know, rate hikes out of the equation. You can see we're slowly uh, filling that back up. Um, and so again, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what some of that dialogue was, and it could even give us a sense of what's going to maybe come at the June meeting. Now, obviously, there's going to be a, a, a PCE report at the end of this week, and then, of course, the first week of June, there'll be a May job report and then a May inflation report right before the June FOMC meeting. So next couple of weeks, uh, there's going to be a lot of data that could also kind of could override a lot of that, those Fed minutes. But again, it will, could give us a little bit of insight in terms of what people were thinking about. Now, at least today, uh, the S&P 500 fell a little bit. Uh, you know, obviously, it, it broke out from here. There was a consolidation pattern here. It had looked like a diamond pattern. It was a really nice setup. Uh, and unfortunately, the, the market, at least for now, it's broken higher. You know, in my experience with these things, it's not uncommon sometimes for these patterns to break higher and then come all the way back down and then actually continue through to the other side. So um, I'm not really convinced that this, this rally is for real. Uh, number one, we stalled out at that 4,200 level, which was the level we were talking about being the call wall. And that's still the call wall. I mean, pretty much. Uh, if, if we kind of focus on like where zero DTE has option trading has been that 4,200 level has been pretty firm the last three days. And, uh, you know, as long as 4,200 continues to be a, from an option perspective, the level where the options market really doesn't see the S and P 500 rising above, it's going to be very hard for the S and P 500 to get above 4,200. Uh, and so it's kind of, uh, still my belief that that's kind of the upper end of the range that we've been trapped in now for a number of of weeks. And based on the data I've seen, I don't really see any change yet to suggest that call wall is really going to start meaningfully moving higher, at least not at this point. And so today we got a little bit of a pullback. Uh, you can see that we basically came back right now with 38% retracement off of this low. And then if even if you go back to this point in time here, just a 61.8% retracement. So at this point, uh, the bears really haven't done a lot to convince anyone that there's this is nothing more than just a one day wonder. Uh, again, ideally, if you're a bear, you want to see the market gap lower tomorrow and then just, you know, kind of fall right through this uh, support region in here between 4100 and 4150. This was a very, very strong level of support for a, a couple of days. Remember, that was that whole week, May 5th through uh, May, 6th, May 16th. So this is really the big region of support that may be just as equally as tough for the bears to break as it has been for the bulls to break the 4,200 level. So again, 4,150, probably your support region, another support region around 4,100. So there could be a little bit of an air pocket between 4,150 and 4,100. Likewise, if, if for some reason we're able to uh, very quickly tomorrow uh, gap higher and start you know, taking out this high here uh, in a reasonable manner, uh, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to refill this gap and at least come right back up to this this trend line. So for, right back to 4,200 and retest it again. So again, this is just sort of where we are right now on the S&P. When we flip over to the NASDAQ, 
The NASDAQ has gotten up to around 13,900. Uh, again, here was our consolidation, our rising wedge pattern. Again, we talked about in the video how it's not unusual sometimes to break out and move up and then come back down and around. So again, I still think you got to be cautious with this market up at these levels. Value From a valuation standpoint, certainly things are very stretched. So again, with this one, with this too, you can see the NASDAQ if you go from here to here. Again, just a 23% retracement from here to here, just a, about a 38% retracement. And from here to here, just about a 50% retracement. So this just looks like an ordinary retracement after a very big rapid rally. So um, again, if you're if you're looking for the NASDAQ to drop, you really need to gap below these levels here. There's a nice gap to fill down at 13,600. And then you're talking about getting into these 13,004 area. Uh, again, take out this high very quickly, 13,760. And you could be off to trying to at least come back up to the upper end of this range at 13. 800 or so. If we look at the, the Dow Jones, the Dow has been very weak. You can see that the Dow is basically sitting on a major level of support right now. Uh, this goes back to this point in time right here, uh, this 32,985 region. Gap below it, there's multiple gaps that need to be filled all the way down to 32,395. You hold this level, you're probably going to see a retracement back up to 33,550 or so. Um, there's really nothing special going on here with the Dow at this point, at least on an intraday basis. Uh, finally, you're going to want to keep an eye on the dollar index because the dollar index has been moving higher and the dollar index has been trying to break out. Uh, here's one of the, the big levels here right here at this 103.50 region. Uh, you can see there was some support back in here. You can see we've tested it now a couple of times. It's going to be a big level for the dollar because you can obviously see there's the potential for a a reversal double top forming with a break below 102.90, uh, potentially signaling further declines. Otherwise, you get a clean break over 103.50, and there's some room to run here back up to around 105. So that's all I have for you today. Uh, thanks a lot. Bye.